Victoria Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here in Briarwood, Jamaica, New York. Glad you are worshiping with us on this Sunday, October the 23rd. This is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Also, we'll be celebrating uh, part of the Children's Sabbath. For those who are able, let us please stand for the call to worship and opening hymn. How shall we know that we have found favor in your sight, O God? How do children know that they are created in your image? How do we raise up youth to always know your presence goes with them? How do How we, we find this faith within ourselves, O God? God? With Moses we implore, show us your glory. With the with children, children we seek your, your graciousness now. now. Let us remain standing as we sing, Jesus Loves Me. so that 
children, when they go to school, they can experience help. And also, Children's Defense Fund helps a lot in, in making sure there's nutritional and also school food provided for these children. But it also <clears throat> advocates for programs, for, uh, for safety programs to help children feel safe. So they might advocate for, uh, for safety from gun violence or advocate for gun control or other things for the well-being of the children. So we celebrate today. <clears throat> we celebrate the accomplishments of the Children's Defense Fund. But more than that, we celebrate children. We celebrate God's gift to us and we celebrate the presence that we have of those children and pray that we can make it a better and safe world for those that are for those children. Um, also, in way of announcements today, we did our first fundraiser since uh, the pandemic. Uh, not as many people as we hoped for, but it was a good time. I uh, enjoyed, enjoyed being with one another. I enjoyed really good food and good fellowship uh, and a kind of a rowdy bingo crowd because they weren't getting <laughs> the right numbers for bingo. <laughs> so, always a good time. So I thank you uh, still. If you would like to uh, send in donations, all the proceeds from last night's fundraiser was for the free Briarwood community meal to help with that program. So thank you again. and. Uh, as we move on with our worship service, I will be going into our Psalter reading. The Psalter reading today is from Psalm 99. The response will be, extol the sovereign, our God, and worship at God's holy temple. Let us begin with the response. Extol the, the sovereign, sovereign our God, and worship at God's, God's holy temple. God is ruler, let the peoples tremble. God is the God is great in Zion. God is son to the world of the Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is God. Mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have a secure justice and greatness in the Extol the sovereign our God. Worship at God's footstool. Holy is God. Holy is God. Extol the Son of our God, and worship at God's holy temple. Moses and Aaron were among God's priests. Samuel also was among those who called on God's name. They cried to God, and God answered them. God spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They took God to priests and the statues that God gave them. O Sovereign our God, you answered them. You are forgiving God to them. Avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the sovereign our God, worship at God's holy mountain. For the sovereign our God is holy. Extol the sovereign our God and worship at God's holy temple. Amen. As we continue our worship today, we our prayer of confession <clears throat> will be in the form of a unison prayer. Let us pray together. When we hear again, dear, dear God, God, that others call us by name in prayers to you, we feel that you do count. When we see that others have noticed the most modest of our loving labors, we know a sustenance that renews the soul's energy. We as a congregation are the church, yet this church cannot be nothing without individual members. We would ask to be gentle locators of hope, tender of coverers of hidden faith, and encouragers among those who are trying to transform their own and their faith into actions that reflect your service to you, O God. Amen. Hear these words of the assurance of God's blessing. In Jesus Christ, God knows and receives us as we are. Listen, give thanks, and live. Amen. The statement of faith for the day will be a new creed. For those who are able, let us please stand as we recite this together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We, we believe, believe in God, God, God who was created and, and is creating, who has come into Jesus, Jesus, the Lord made flesh, to reconcile and make new. 
who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to see justice and to resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our just and our hope. In life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks to be God. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us read one another with this video. For you at home, if you're sitting beside someone, grab their hand, give them a kiss on the cheek, or give them a hug and say, glad you're here. If no one is with you at this point, after the worship service, call someone up and say, good to hear your voice. Glad you're in my life. You may be seated. The first lesson of the day will be read by Sandra Wiesman. Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. May God's blessing be added to these words we've heard. Uh, this passage that was just read, I'm always reminded of the hymn, Rock of Ages. <laughs> so, uh, as we understand to enjoy God's full glory means to have the terror and everything else that goes with that as we are not so, so holy as to absorb God's presence. So we are glad that that rock of ages does hide us and enables us to feel the presence without feeling that terror and, and horrible burning clenching fire of judgment. At this time we have a blessing for the children which is inspired by 1 Thessalonians which you'll hear the lesson after the blessing. So let's listen to the blessing to the children. Grace and peace to you our children we will always give thanks to you. We pray for you constantly because we love you. We love you just as God loves you. We know, children of God, that God loves you so much. There are no words to express it. There are no wonders we can perform. But we know that the power of God is in you. We can see it in your faces. You remind us of God's love. Teach us to see the world as you do. Surprise us with the wonders you see. Show us what gifts God has given you, and we will bless you and protect you. And we will always give thanks for you. We will bless you in the name of our God. We will bless you again and again. Grace and peace to you, our children. 
grace and peace to you who show us God's glory shining through your faces. Amen. Amen. Our second lesson of the day will be read by Nancy Gray. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of person we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy and inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place on your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. God's blessing be added to these words we have heard. At this time, we will go to our sharing of joys and concerns. Are there spe specific joys and concerns that you would like to share today with one another? Nancy. Uh, we have a friend who does mission work in the Ukraine. She's actually stationed in Spain, but she travels and she landed today uh, in Ukraine with the missions team. And they establish um, art and drama kids clubs, Christian art and drama kids clubs, to help children deal with the traumas of war uh, and being the way the world is at this very moment in time i don't know that i would want to go to ukraine <laughs> so uh, i'm asking prayer for judy and her team as they will be there probably for a week establishing this new kids club of art and drama for the children of Ukraine who are suffering terribly. And by the same token, um, we need to remember to pray for just for the Middle East. And I, I hear people saying, oh, I stand with Israel, I stand with Israel. Well, you know what, it's, it's a package deal. Israel and Gaza both are in great need. Others today. I would like to pray for my family, for my friends. Uh, I want to, you know, ask God for guidance for my friend Jose Luis for the new opportunities in line. I would like to pray for him that God send him for the better place, you know. Um, also, I'd like to pray for myself. Uh, give it thanks to God for my opportunity to work in the nursing home. I still love the job all the time. Give me hope and give me more experience in life that I want. And thank you, God, for that. Any other joys or concerns you'd like to share? I have that uh, angiogram this week. My dog is having major dental work now. So we pray for Sandy for the, with the angiogram that there'll be uh, no grave results or anything, but just. Uh, helpful guidance along the way, uh, and also for our dog, Vinny. Uh, 
has become such a you know, integral part of our lives. And so if, if they're having major surgery and the fatigue, mm -hmm. it is, uh, it affects us too, <laughs> as their owners or as their companions. I'm not sure who owns whom at one point for pets, <laughs> but they become part of our lives. Um, and as Nancy has said about the, uh, about the Middle East and about uh, Ukraine, that we do pray for all the people involved. So no matter if you're the aggressor or if you're the defender, there are people that do not want to be involved and there are people on, both, on all sides of the issue that say this really should not be occurring. It's not good for either side. So we do pray for all individuals and pray for God's guidance and justice and peace to prevail. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we are thankful that you call us as your children, that you hear us, and that even when we become disobedient, you still call us. You do give us discipline, but it's not harsh. It's a discipline to bring us back, bring us back and to recreate us. And you recreate us just as you recreate and recreate all individuals. You who made us from our from birth until now, who has formed us in our mother's womb, we ask for your healing hands upon those that are in need of mended bones, of need of muscles to be mended, need of different places within the body to feel that healing. But not only physical healing, we ask for spiritual and mental healing. We ask for for us and especially for the children that are experiencing wartime trauma, that you would help, help the helpers, help those that are going as missionaries, those that are going as humanitarian workers to help ease the pain and, and to help individuals find ways to work through anger, frustration, fear, and that whole full gamut of emotions. We pray for leaders that they would listen to you, O oh God, that they would find ways of peace and ways to look at all people, not just some. We ask for you, O oh God, to be with us as we struggle day to day, and that we may not create a country war, but sometimes when we don't face our own problems, we recreate wars um, with other people and other individuals. Help us, O oh God, to always find your peace and find ways to work through. We give you thanksgiving for the joys in our lives of knowing our parents, grandparents, our loved ones that surround us, those that are close as sisters and brothers. We give you thanksgiving for those relationships and pray that those close relationships that help to sustain us in good times and bad times may be available to other individuals too that they find those places of solace and joy of dancing and of singing of giving praise and enjoying all of our brothers and sisters together for you who created us still sustain us we ask for so many things god but we always give you glory for being there for us and always welcome us home we continue to pray to you as God has your son has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The gospel lesson today is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. For those who are able, let us please stand in respect for the gospel. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he, in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show a difference to no one. 
for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? And he answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks to be God. You may be seated. Sometimes we want things that we just can't obtain, or when we obtain things and obtain them in wrong ways, we look for others to be in that same boat with us, to say, oh, you're as bad as I am because we gain the same things, not by honest means, but by dishonest means. In, in the beginnings of, of what we call the church, as Jesus comes and as ushering from going from the temple of Judaism into the, just the assembly together as the called out ones who are called in the name of Jesus, but called from all ages past into the presence to celebrate God's reuniting a new covenant, we find that the church falls into old ways also. Uh, in today's lesson, in the gospel lesson, this is before the, what we, this Christian era became. It was Jesus coming to, to give us the movement and to show us a new way. But those that were in the old way already knew that there was something different coming and their way of life would be a, a little bit exposed. Now there was something always within that called out congregation, even in Judaism, that knew that they shouldn't be always seeking wealth and taking money and everything else from, 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 from all those that were around. God even used the the law and other things to make sure that they were relying upon God for their wealth and success. So the land which no one was ever supposed to own, the land was through creation and God allowed people to use the land. And so through the years, God would say, yeah, you can use this plot of land, you can grow things, but on the seventh year you let it rest. You let it, you have seven years. So you grow the same thing on this plot of ground for six years, you let it rest. Let it, let it regain its nourishment and energy, and God will supply that uh, energy. And you're never to take everything from that plot of land, all the fruits and everything that it provides. You leave the gleanings for those strangers and foreigners. You provide for other people, just as I have provided you this land that you can use. And even so, the, in Judaism, we find that there was a year of jubilee where everything was set free. So if somebody was indebted to you, if someone had owed you something, if you had plot of land from some, somebody else, in theory, the year of jubilee, everything was set free and went back to where everybody possessed their own things and not possessed the things of others. It was a way to say you can never take advantage of another individual. That individual's life and things are not yours to have. But people like to have things. They like to have more than their neighbors. They like to look at others and say, you, look what they got. I can have that. But I can have more. I can be better. So Jesus comes along and says, no, we're coming along and we're sharing everything together, making sure everybody's taken care of, just as God has created us all, that God sent, sent Jesus into the world to save us all, not just some people, not just the elite, but all people. So God was for all people, Jesus comes, and Jesus is for all people, and these possessions that they're looking at, they're like, uh, Jesus is kind of letting everybody into the into our world 
Jesus has gone around, we kind of like that he's a good teacher now, but we think that his teachings and healings and bringing these crowds together should only be for us Jews. He should not let not be sharing this with the Gentiles. The Pharisees and the Sadducees said, let it just stay here and let him increase the temple's wealth. Don't let Jesus go out and give these commoners the idea that they have equality with us for the elite. So one of the things that had happened is that in, in, in Judaism at this time, Judaism, just like today, is, is your nationality and your religion. They're not separate. It's one and the same. We, we don't always kind of get that, but if, if you're Jewish, then you're part of Israel and that you're part of the church, part of the, of the temple and other things. And so in that way, taxes and, and religion and state go together hand in hand. Um, so these Herodians, the Pharisees and Sadducees understood that. They understood that they had made alliances with the Roman Empire. They understood that they made an agreement with the Roman Empire. If we do this, you'll give X amount of the tax that you collect back to us. And we as heads of the temple and those that are around us then will use this money in the temple. But that means that I, as, as a Pharisee, can have more wealth than other people. And then this way, if we get this money collected and there's a temple tax, and then we can also let the Roman soldiers and the tax collectors use the temple area to collect more taxes, that means that the people will still be bringing in their sacrifices and their offerings. And so we can make these alliances and the Pharisees and that are going, that's a pretty good deal. I'm sweetening the pot here. Don't care about these people down here that they may not feel quite right, but you know, this is looking good for me, God. So here's Jesus teaching equality and other things for everybody, and then, so the Pharisees are smart. They send in this group of people and say, oh, Jesus, you're such a good teacher. All these flattering words and everything else um, almost sounds like the Congress today. Think sometimes <laughs> trying to catch you off guard but they say oh so glad we see you have done this and this and this and say like, okay Jesus we got a real serious question to ask you because we're wondering is it right to pay taxes what so Jesus comes up with this you know he's looking he's like I know what you're trying to do if, if Jesus says yes you can pay taxes and say oh you see he's not from God Jesus isn't from God because he says to pay taxes he says no it's not right to pay taxes and it's like oh then the Roman Empire says that's wrong you have to pay your taxes so you know Jesus goes okay I'll play your game give me a coin <laughs> Whose face is on this coin? And who does this represent? Well, you know, King James and as is Caesar, uh, the updated versions say emperor. But the head of the country, uh, so the ruling body, that's whose head was on the coin. And he says, okay, so if this coin has this person, the emperor's head, then that means that coin belongs to the emperor. So if it belongs to the emperor, give it back to the emperor. Render to the emperor what's the emperor's, and render to God what's God. So you give that kind of money back to the emperor, and then you treasure the life that God has given to you to live. It goes back to that old process and that old thing that God has told us many years ago. I've given you things to use, the land to grow food and everything else, but it's not yours. What's yours is your life. The other people's lives are not yours, but you're there to share with other people. That coin that those people brought, that's nothing. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. God owns everything. God made everything. How are we expected that we can own something? We get so greedy, even uh, 
the uh, Amos would say, yeah, we got so greedy that we sold our children for a sandal. Can you imagine we disregard life so much, not just people that's not related to us, but our own flesh and bones. We say, oh, you go. I need to be so important. And we sell everybody out. And then what happens the day you die? Nobody's there. You're all alone. It's what we are learning that we are meant to be in community with one another. It's what Jesus came to tell us. That the preciousness and the value that you have is in what God has given us from the beginning that formed us from the dust of the earth. You are alive. You have been given life. You have been given other people to be in fellowship with. You have been given the earth to give you things to help you live. You have been granted the supreme privilege of being caretakers. And we have even taken that so far as to say, oh, where the caretaker is, is mine. A caretaker does not own the property that that person takes care of. The caretaker takes pride in making sure the property looks good to the owner. And so we are rebellious, but God always calls us back. Just let's try to make a way. And so Jesus, as he encounters these people in this story today, says, no, give back to Caesar what's Caesar's. If that's what Caesar wants, his head on a coin, and let Caesar have it. Let the emperor have it. But what God wants, he wants you to be family. He wants you to be in communion with one another. And share with one another. And that means that we share with all. This is the way that we have an inheritance for our children. Some people are not blessed to have children, but we know others that do have children. And we become aunts and uncles, grandparents, good confidants and friends. Someone that they can lean on when there's nobody else to. Someone that represents to them God and Jesus. Someone that represents care. Someone that represents hope in a world that seems so cold and without any uh, way to see forward or to see light. For God so loved the world that God did give the only Son, that whosoever believed in Jesus should not perish, but should have everlasting life. God sent his Son to all the world, not just some. For God loved us so much, and God still calls us. May we throw away Caesar's coin and accept the gift of love and life and be the creator. Amen and amen. amen. Our second hymn of the day will be Children of God.
This time we'll be receiving our afternoon offering. Uh, for you at home, there is an address on your screen if you'd like to send in an offering. But more than anything, please include us in your prayers and offer up thanksgiving to God always for one another. <laughs> especially this week, the children's Sabbath, to remember the children in your prayer, and to remember those that care for the children, yourself, that we may lead by example and lead them into a better and brighter future for the sake of our Creator and our God. Amen. Amen. 